And your seven minutes starts now. Hi, good morning, Mr. Gregory. I'm one of the doctors in this hospital, in this uh, GP center, and I was uh, from the notes I see that you've been complaining of indigestion and the heartburn. Would you mind telling me which came first, the indigestion or the heartburn? I would say, uh, like, I had in indigestion for very long, but recently mm -hmm. the heartburn is something that's troubling me more. Um, so do you mind telling me what you actually mean by indigestion uh, in your own words? It's just that I feel uh, uh, after meals or even without having meals, my tummy to be bloated. Mm -hmm. like it just I've got a lot of wind and then I also pass a lot of wind and I get a lot of attendance. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I mean by indigestion. And uh, you mentioned that you've been having some heartburn as well. So for how long have you been suffering from these two conditions? So for about six months, but the heart, heartburn is getting worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so obviously it's been six months, so it's been gradual. So do you feel it's a constant pain or does it come and go? No, I don't have pain. Uh, you mentioned heartburn? Yes, yes. So the heartburn, that's something, it's not constant. It usually comes and goes. Okay, so you feel it's getting worse as well. Uh, would you mind pointing to any place that's bothering you the most in your tummy? Uh, no, there is no particular place that, that bothers me. It's just that along my epigastric and along my chest, I feel that heartburn. Mm -hmm. but I don't have and do you feel that anything that uh, you do makes it better? Like uh, if you're taking any medication or sitting or any positional changes, that makes it better? Um, not specific what kind of positions um, like leaning forwards or lying down or sitting uh, I'm sorry this is not me I think someone else has their the, the, I can't hear you properly sorry yes yeah um, does it make anything worse like any spicy food or any correlation with any other medication or food? Yes, spicy foods does make it worse. And at the same time, as you were talking about my positions, so leaning, uh, like when I lie down, it doesn't get better. Rather, I feel it gets worse. All right, so, okay. And uh, do you feel there is any other associated symptoms like uh, any nausea, vomiting, or like any difficulty in swallowing? No. Uh, do you feel any pain during swallowing? No. Uh, do you have any nausea vomiting? No. Uh, how about uh, any abdominal pain or distension or any bloating feeling? Yes, yeah, so I do have that bloating and I pass a lot of wind. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of flatulence. Yeah. And can you tell me how your bowel habit is? Like any diarrhea or constipation? No. Um, do you feel, okay, and is, is there any blood in your uh, bowel? Any no. uh, blood in your stool? Uh, do you mind telling me about your waterworks? Is it okay? Yes, waterworks are fine. Um, how about any weight loss? Have you recently any uh, changes in your weight? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, no changes in my weight. I have been always very fat, as you can see. And any lumps or bumps? No lumps or bumps. Okay, do you feel like there is any changes in any other parts of your body, like any joint pain or eye changes or... Um, any difficulty with other things? How about uh, any fever? Do you feel in the last six months you've had any significant fever? No. Um, uh, how about uh, any chest pain or like you mentioned heartburn, but I was just wondering if there is any chest pain or any shortness of breath or palpitation? No, there isn't. Okay, I would like to ask you some uh, questions about your past history. Do you, do you happen to have any uh, past medical history or surgical history that you know of? Uh, no. All right. And uh, do you have any family history of any uh, condition? Uh, I, I think my dad had a stomach operation for some perforation or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than that, no. Uh, and apart from that, my mom had inflammatory bowel disease. Okay. All right. And um, do you mind ask, uh, if I ask you some uh, personal questions? Like, do you smoke or are you, do you drink alcohol? 
Yes, yes, I do smoke. So I smoke about 10 cigarettes per day. And mm -hmm. even I drink about five glasses of wine every day. Okay. And how about your diet? Uh, is it uh, mostly, you mentioned that you take, like spicy food makes it worse? Yes, yes. So my diet is pretty much mixed, but it's just that sometimes I do stay so busy. I don't get proper time to have my meals and I, I just gulp on food somehow and, and keep doing my work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I would like to talk to my examiner now. Dear examiner, I would like to know the general appearance of the patient. Is my patient anxious or in, is there, there anything else that I need to know? No. Uh, how about the vital signs and uh, the blood pressure, the pulse? Blood pressure is 120 by 80. And the BMI? And the BMI is 30. Okay. Uh, I would like to do if, uh, oh, okay. So is my pa patient anemic? Is there any pallor? So there's no pallor. Uh, jaundice? No. Uh, lymphadenopathy? No. All right. I would like to f uh, focus my examination on the abdomen now. Um, I would like to know on inspection if there is any distension or any visible mass. No. Um, on palpation, is there any tenderness or any uh, visible, uh, any organomegaly? No. Uh, on auscultation, is there any finding, um, like uh, the bowel sound? Yep, they're heard. And is it normal? Okay, uh, with the consent of the patient, as well as the, along with the chaperone, I would like to go through the genitalia, the hernial orifices, and the uh, DRE. Normal. normal. DRE normal as well? Yep. All right. Um, is there any offices available, like uh, urine, dipstick? Negative. Uh, blood sugar? 5.3. And is there any ECG? Negative. Negative. Um, okay, so hi Gregory. So I actually had a chat with my examiner and got to know about your physical finding. So from uh, what I understand, you've been having this indigestion and heartburn for a long time. So I know I understand that you want to do an endoscopy or gastroscopy to rule out any uh, other condition. But from the history and the examination, and especially with your family history, I believe uh, there are uh, multiple causes that that might be a, a cause to your actual diagnosis. So uh, it's better that we go through an endoscopy to see the inner lining of your esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. Uh, so what will happen is we will put an endoscope, that is the tube that you were, uh, gastroscope or endoscope, that will, I'll, I'll draw a picture for you. So what will happen, we'll, we'll go through your mouth and gently go down to your um, uh, throat or t tongue and go th to see your stomach and the duodenum and the esophagus. So, and like any, and if we see anything suspicious or any nasty growth, we will take a sample from. It might be uh, different things that might be causing your problem because you've been mentioning that there is heartburn as well. So um, right now, what I feel the differential for your problem might be due to any peptic ulcer or any um, gastroesophageal reflux. It might be some other causes because uh, there is, um, indigestion, uh, although there is no blood, but I would still like to do a colonoscopy to uh, rule out any other suspicion of any cancer or uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Do you happen to know what this is? Uh, no. Uh, so you mentioned your mother had uh, this sort of problem, so it might be one of them, but according to your history as well as the finding, uh, it might not be, but it's better to rule it out by colonoscopy. So what happens is it usually there is abdominal pain and there is blood in your stool, which is uh, currently negative, but yes. still it's better to go through it and to exclude the condition. And uh, so right now I, we can just uh, go through the uh, specialist and review with all the investigations. Okay. Uh, do you have any um, questions for me? No, no. Uh, I'm pretty good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, dear. So as uh, I do remember, Dr. Tazreen, I, I did have a role play with you right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> from there only, I do remember you that you have a very good flow. You're very clear with what you want. Like uh, you have a very good vocal, like, you know, as you speak, like even when I listen to you, it becomes very, very relaxing for me because your words are easily caught up you know, and I catch them very easily. Thank you. <laughs> These are all your positive. Yes, please. Someone wants to say something. 
No. Okay. So these are the positive things that uh, you have. I'll just see if someone's said. Oh yes. So Dr. Sharier mentions you've got a super voice, which <laughs> I totally agree. So that's really, really important, like especially when you're speaking and your words. So they're very clear, dear, very clear, which is like, you know, one of your very good points and one of your very strong points. Coming to this case, this case is not as difficult as it looks. Okay, so this is a very, very simple case. And uh, basically what happens here is I've come with heartburn and have come with indig indigestion. So I was very happy that you wanted me to explain what do you mean by indigestion and what exactly what has happened. And I did tell you that I feel bloated, I feel I pass a lot of wind and it's been there throughout my life, but it's getting worse. But it was the heartburn, dear, that I wanted you to put a little bit of more focus on because that's when only you could have got the diagnosis. So if you tell me more about the heartburn, that you have been getting this heartburn, what is getting worse? So I did tell you when I lie down, it gets worse. I am obese. So obesity, I have heartburn. When I am going to lie down, I am going to have more bouts of coughing. That indicates worsening of GERD. The other thing, so when you lie down, as you say worsens, what do you feel? So I feel that my heartburn gets worse and is that associated with bouts of coughing? The answer would have been yes. If you would have asked more, do you feel that you bring up the sore acidic taste in your mouth? Yes, but it never happened before. Previously, I just used to feel burning, but nowadays I also feel that sore acidic taste in my mouth, meaning I'm regurgitating basically acids from my tummy. So these were a few more questions which could have helped you to realize that this was going towards a GERD a gastroesophageal reflux. So I'm going to go through the slides so that you all are, like you all get very clear. So looking into the history, basically this history was just asking about heartburn and just asking about what do you mean by, uh, by your indigestion. So Mr. Gregory has had problems with excessive belching, wind all his life, which I told you for the last couple of years, I've noticed I had occasional heartburn, but for the last six months, it has been worsened. Episodes of regurgitation, Acidic taste in my mouth, which started to worry me. Even when I lie down in the bed at night time, I get bouts of coughing. So these all indicate that my GERD is worsening. I'm not on any medications. I'm just heavy, meaning I have a high BMI. My mother, my father, I've given you some history of ulcers and IBD, just a family history. Yes, I'm married. I'm an accountant. I'm very busy. So I, because I'm very busy, I tend to gulp food. So I don't have proper time for food because I'm very busy. So that also means that I do not have my meals at my proper time. I smoke and drink, which are all the risk factors or the aggravating factors. Smoking, alcohol, they all aggravate my GERD more. Why? They are the aggravating factors. On examination, apart from being an overweight, there was nothing more. So on the history here, you got most of the things apart from having a more better idea on how bad my heartburn is getting. So what I have is most likely, so moving on. So moving on, so history you all got, physical examination you all know, this is a general appearance, vitals, BMI, thank you for asking BMI, pickled, followed by abdominal inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation, diary, which was office test completely normal. Advise the patient about management means, most likely what you have is a condition we call GERD. So what is GERD? That's usually the reflux or the, uh, the gastric contents comes into the mouth because of many, many things it can happen. However, a diagnosis of GERD is basically a clinical diagnosis. Now, so we usually do not need investigations until and unless someone develops danger signs like dysphagia, weight loss, hematemesis, or any abnormal findings on physical examination. Followed by then, how do we manage GERD? We manage by lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. The first thing is lifestyle. Number one, reduce weight. Number two, stop smoking. Number three, reduce alcohol. Number three, improve eating habits. Number five, elevation of the head of the bed. Then if they don't help, that's when we go for medications like antacids or the renitidins. But the best drug is PPIs, which is omeprazoles and pantoprazoles. 
we do operate in case of severity and if we do not treat GERD, that's when this GERD can lead to complications like esophagitis, stricture, iron deficiencies, respiratory, barrett esophagus, barrett causing more of a malignancy and hiatus hernia. So that was the full case. Before I finish today's session, any questions from the group? Um, Dr. Jitpa Sam, because the question uh, mentioned that uh, the patient wanted gastroscopy, uh, should we say that uh, we, because you mentioned that it's uh, definitely a clinical diagnosis, yes, but uh, providing uh, his family history, yeah, sorry. Yes, even if there's a family history, because the family history, he's not presenting with anything that's suggestive of an IBD. Mm -hmm. IBD will have abdominal pain with diarrhea or blood in stool. So this is just a heartburn and an indigestion. So we are not going to do a gastroscopy. Number one reason, it's a GERD, it's a clinical diagnosis. Number two, he doesn't have any, the warning signs, like he doesn't have dysphagia, he doesn't have weight loss, he doesn't have any of the alarming signs. Number three, gastroscopy will not help to diagnose anything of IBD. So IBD is a colonoscopy. At the same time, because no abdominal pain and no diarrhea, no blood, no colonoscopy. Okay, so uh, we can say that uh, I, although you need a gastroscopy, but uh, the other there's no red flags at, at the moment, so there is no need to go through those. Let's go through the lifestyle modification and see. Yes, so I would say it the other way that at this stage there is nil current indication for doing a gastroscopy because this diagnosis is made clinically so you do not need a gastroscopy but if you develop any danger signs so i would just put it the other way the same thing but just the other way that if you develop any danger signs that's when a gastroscopy may be an indication but at this stage no no gastroscopy All right, no thank you Sam, can you give uh, at least one or two questions to differentiate between GERD and peptic ulcer? Okay, so peptic ulcer, what I would say is peptic ulcer would be associated with some kind of pain. So GERD is only burning. There is no pain. But a peptic ulcer would be associated with pains depending upon uh, 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 like the after meals and prior meals. So they have a pain which is related to meals. That's the biggest difference between PUD and GERD. Uh, okay, some, one question that, uh, uh, what's this called? Urea, uh, urea breath test that we yes, will do. For, uh, for PUD. For PUD, okay, yeah, okay. Not positive for GERD. It's only positive for PUD. Why is that? Uh, the urea oh, yes, yeah. comes to do with the enzyme urease and the helicobacter breaks that urease enzyme and that's why the urea breath test becomes positive. Something to do with. Also, night symptoms most common with GERD. Yes, yes. So, okay, so urea breath test only we do in PUDs. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. And... Uh, Just adding, I'm sorry, the urea breath test and the serology the antibodies to h pylori that we do that only for pud okay then uh, so this case like was an upper abdomen case uh still we have to go for all uh, uh like a uh, pr and the uh, hernia and everything uh, examinations again having said that this is a heartburn and indigestion and yeah. this is a gi symptom and that's why we are focusing our examination on gi if you uttered the word inspection that's when you go inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation, DRE as our format. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. But so in addition, yes. like, uh -huh. you know, because that's the main system. So mm. you need to do at least one detailed system. And after that, even for a heartburn, if you want to do a quick uh, cardiovascular only to rule out that it's not MI, that, you know, you're not differentiating a chest pain and a heartburn, like, you know, it can be a MI as well. So a ECG and a Cardiovascular examination can always help, no harm. Yeah. But, but then again, MI is most important if someone comes with epigastric pain than heartburn. But even in a heartburn, if you rule out MI, no harm. Okay. Because Thanks. this is a GIT, you need to go inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation. Even now, now this this is going to be a bit risky. Doesn't look very good, 
but still if anyone does abdomen soft non tender no ergonomically heart sounds dual no added sounds office test that also is a pass to me why there is nothing on a inspection publication percussion consultation diary that you need to do did you get me yes yes because it's the, the upper upper abdomen yeah. case yeah it's upper abdomen and the most important thing over here is the bmi the, the bmi is 30 20 bmi and the lifestyle and the uh, and the accountant like as a because of a stress or something yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. so they all contribute to gerd and as again dr sharia writes the night symptoms so first of all i'm obese the second when i lie flat the third is my gerd is getting worse and worse that's when this gerd is represented as cuff okay uh yes and uh, the peptic ulcer according to its location has different symptoms uh, is that right because gastric ulcer that worsens on eating yes, and yes. the adrenal ulcer is really yes so that's related to meals yes. one is prior meals one is after meals yes. yeah that's why adrenal patients are more obese yep 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 but then again like you won't get a case where you need to basically rule out that is it a peptic or a duodenal ulcer we don't have any case with duodenal ulcer basically so what you have what we have is a pud and the pud is the book case if you all look into a case that you have a pud with a hiatus hernia it's a book case it's almost towards the end the last cases that's one of the recall that you get uh what what difference you told about the uh, diet with the du uh, duodenal and the gastric so which one increase with so, the i i really cannot remember at the moment what but one is gets worse on empty stomach one gets worse on full stomach okay yeah so that's the difference between gastric and duodenal i really cannot remember which which one but one gets worse with empty stomach i don't know dr sharier if you can if you remember at this stage yeah i do uh guys uh in case of duodenal ulcer just remember one thing you know so that you know no one forget uh it's called you know duodenal ulcer is called hunger pain like so when you were in hungry you know uh, when you were in empty stomach you know there will be pain actually oh. and when you eat food and you know so you know the pain will be gone and just the same thing is vice versa with you know the you know, the gastric ulcer just the opposite actually when you take the food you know there's more pain Yeah, so that's just a, like the opposite actually. So that's the reason in uh, gastric ulcer there is you know uh, chances that you know that the weight loss could be a bit more common actually. Yeah, but you know in MC clinical you know how we remember in MC MCQ the duodenal and the gastric you know usually that much uh, not required because it will come as I mentioned by doctor at the sum that you know uh, mostly the ulcer will come you know not separately duodenal gastric will come here actually. All right. so the yeah. keyword is yeah you know that you know hunger pain actually in duodenal ulcer just you know mamonic yes thank you that's that's helpful you reminded me of my 2014 mcq preparations yes <laughs> yeah. uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you yeah yes dear yeah. so that's basically it so your duodenal ulcer gets worse on empty stomach and your peptic ulcer gets worse on full stomach that's but rather than remembering my sentence that way i think dr sharia is one remember one duodenal with hunger pain so you'll remember the opposite one and for clinicals yes no particular case that comes with that you need to differentiate that this is a duodenal or this is a peptic ulcer pain abdomen gets worse with meals or not meals pud is going to present with pain in abdomen along with heartburns yes it can be but pud is with pain and gerd is with heartburn so you would need to differentiate whether it's a gerd or it's it's a pud so pud is with pain gerd is with heartburn no pain yep increase bmi in duodenal sir yep so that's pretty much gi for today happy to patch up next again we are going to have a class very very soon and i think that's going to be my last class with 21 of... i think dr satisham yes. is yes. just uh, yes. uh, confirming yes. with you today's 19 and uh, the next one we're going 21 is that the same time right yes same time on monday <laughs> yes <laughs> and <laughs> okay yeah
Great. Okay. Thank you. Lovely class, Doctor. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a great day. Monday? Monday or Tuesday? Monday. Yeah. Uh, th this one. Yeah. This one is Monday, actually, Doctor. Uh, the coming one is will be on Monday. The Monday, neurology. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like this one, you know, because I think Doctor has some, you know, the duties, actually. So we are taking this one in 9, you know, 21. Yeah. Yeah. Monday eight thirty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same. Monday same. Same. Today I'll also uh, give it to group uh, in our WhatsApp group. Don't worry. Yeah. Thank you. All those questions. So good night, all. Uh, have a nice day. <laughs> okay. Good night.